Do you think going into January? I love when you ask me what I think. You really want to know what I think. Yeah, I want to know. Like. Hi everyone and welcome to Reality Check where we'll discuss what's happening in Toronto's real estate market, where it's going and help you make informed decision buying and selling real estate. I'm here with Devani Zito. Hi guys. Back again in the studio and um, we're going to talk about what was going on in November. We had an interest rate hike. We got one more in December. One more. And for the year. For the year, hopefully. And hopefully we ended there, but likely, likely not. <laughs> yeah, we'll see what the, what happens with that. But just to get started, let's get on with what's happening in the number of sales overall, because the number of sales have been lacking a little bit this year. Yeah, last year was what one twenty one hundred and twenty one thousand by the end of the year. And right now we're at about seventy two seven, thousand. Yeah, seventy two. So I would say we're going to end the year probably at around seventy five thousand sales units. So yeah, so let's just say 75, 76,000. So that's about, let's say 4,000 more yeah. in December. That puts us below behind a little 35% below what was last year. And that's a lot of transaction. Keep in mind though, yeah. last year was a record breaking year. I mean, like that was bonkers. Yes. Shouldn't have happened. And this is why we're paying for it. We borrowed from the future and you know, everything's got to level off. And we're going to talk about leveling off that. in terms of prices because we're gonna go through that dot chart that says like four dots were out of whack. Let's go with the uh, market watch. So what's going on with the sales? We're sitting at around 4,500 sales. And if you pay attention for the last, I would say, what, since July, we've been hovering between 45 and 5,000 sales. Reason being, we see a lot of homes on the market sometimes that are not selling, they're priced well wrong. Priced, yeah. And they kind of look awful. They shouldn't be on the market to begin with. We'd love to tell you how to do all of that marketing <laughs> strategy and how you should. It's like That's a another profile. show in itself. In terms of active listings, so we've been seeing a gradual decline in number of listings being active. A lot of people that are not selling their homes are taking it off the market. People, they see what the prices are. They don't put it on the market. So we're at just about, just shy of 12,000, we're at 11,900 sales. And to put things in perspective, the previous months was 13,000, the month before was 13,500, and then you know we went all the way to July, that was the peak of it, at around 15,000. So we're seeing a gradual decline in the number of active listings, sales are kind of flat, and this is why the average price right now has almost been flat. We're at 1,079,000. But the gap between active listings and sold is not so far apart. And I think that would be very concerning if it was, but we're not there. Yeah. So. I mean, if the active listings were increasing drastically, that's when we would have seen sharp uh, price drops. But we don't see that. Uh, in terms of months of inventory, I mean, I kind of predicted it last month that we we're going to be almost the same, if not lower. And here it is. We're at 2.62 2 months of inventory. Last month, yeah. we were at 2.63. And at the peak of the slowness, I would say we were at 3.12. That was July. That's yeah. when you know we hit the bottom, I would say, in terms of average prices. And right now, we're kind of balancing and it's favoring sellers. Just moving on to the dot chart, because that will explain where we are. Again, we see the craziness in the four months of uh, February, March, April. That's when it came down. Yeah, of this and, year. Yeah, and this year, and then in July, kind of bottomed out at a million seventy-four thousand. We went all the way up in October to million uh, eighty-nine, and November we came down a little bit at million seventy-nine. But again, these average prices at a million dollar price point, ten thousand dollar drop is not a lot. We will go through it. We're gonna look at average prices for some of the regions and some of the pockets to see how they differ yeah. from each other. And right now, pricing, I do want to add, if you look at this dot chart, we are back in June, July, August of 2021. Yeah. So yeah. it's like this year almost just went poof and we're right back there. So we're just going to go right back, hopefully up on a healthy upward trend, right? Do you think going into January? I love when you ask me what I think. Do you really want to know what I think? Yeah, I want to know. Like, do you think the prices are going to like drastically increase? What's going to happen? I don't think so. Again, we say it every show. We talk about it every day. Every time I step out of the house and people talk real estate, you know, the topic of prices coming down and plummeting, you know, comes up. 
we have a fundamental of immigration, supply and demand uh, that will always, I think, in my humble opinion, uh, again, we don't have a crystal ball and I don't know it all, but in my humble opinion, with all of our experience that we have and based on history, I don't foresee that happening. They will soften, obviously, right, as interest rates will go up, prices will come down. There is a correlation. We'll chat a little bit about that later on. Um, but yeah, I, I don't foresee it. Do you? I don't think anything sharp is going to happen until they actually decrease the interest rates. Yeah. But keep in mind, what I think it's going to happen is that right now we got an artificial pressure to keep the prices down. And there's a lot of people that are not pulling the trigger to buy. So, you know, we're, they're holding back. Yeah. Once you let out these people that are not <laughs> buying. You're making it feel like they're animals in no, cages. No, I mean, like, I know, we I saw know. that. We saw that yeah. in uh, COVID. People didn't buy for they're a few months. They're one foot in, one foot out. Yeah, and as soon as yeah. uh, interest rates dropped, everyone ran. Ran, ran to buy it. And it's that's consumer what, confidence yeah. as well, right? So with that being said, once the uh, interest rates come down, I can foresee with the number of immigrations that we've been having in the and last few months and are going to have, there's going to be a huge uh, price increases. Yeah. And again, as we can see, there's a lot of uh, projects that are canceled, a lot of inventory that's being held back, and that's going to, again, put our pressure on their prices. We also have to keep in mind where we are in, you know, the timeline of the year. We're all in that naturally slower kind of month, yeah. you know, so I think that will affect prices slightly, you know, even in January, which... We're back to the normal cycles, uh, yeah. and I think, you know, as starting January, uh, sorry, December 15th till, I would say, mid-January, there's going to be... A little bit of a slower... Yeah, it's going to be a slower month. Yeah. Going into February, things are going to pick up. Hopefully, once they freeze the interest rates, uh, we'll see more activity. When do you back. think they're going to do that? Um, I would say uh, probably, well, I mean, listen to Ben Tal. Yes, we um, love Ben Tal. Probably, I mean, if, I mean, if this interest rate hike comes up, probably one more, I would say is the maximum. That's the way I look at it, because right now, the, uh, in, um, what do you call it, the stress test yeah. is over 8%. Like, no one's getting any mortgages these days. People are getting qualified for much less than what they would have qualified back in March. But we're going to go through average prices, and you will see the difference between February and right now, how much you're saving. And this is going to be... There's so much that goes into it, right? People and this is so interesting right now. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah. There's yeah. monthly payment. There's affordability as a whole in purchase price. There's prices that came down. There's interest rates that are a factor. And people are and like... And land transfer tax. I yeah, mean, like you're paying less too. transfer yeah. tax out of your pocket. Off so the get -go. much. So let's go to average prices. Let's start with Toronto. Toronto average price is sitting at a million fifty thousand seven eighty eight. Let's just call it million fifty thousand nine hundred. Not much has happened uh, in terms of, uh, I would say, prices. I mean, like, it's 4% lower than yeah. last year, but again... Less volatility less also, volatility if you compare downtown to the GTA as well. Downtown to, yeah, like, majority of GTA or York region, yeah. or you go, like, you know, to uh, Peel region. But let's talk about the detached prices. So in February, in Toronto, the detached prices were at $2,074,000. Right now, we're sitting at $1,056,000. That's drop of over half a million dollar. I mean, the saving, let's talk about the saving that anyone's going to be making mm -hmm. and that 4% land transfer tax that you're going to be, you know, not paying right off the get-go. That's about $20,000 right out the gate. Um, keep in mind, that's a 25% drop in the detached market in Toronto. Condos at the peak were around 831,000. Now they've leveled off. They're like 730,000. Yeah. And there's only 900 uh, units that were traded last month. So if you guys are a first-time investor or a first-time home buyer, that price point is really, really attractive. And that's another reason why I don't think that it's going to come down too, too much. Because now people are seeing this, you know, the lights are going off in their heads and they're kind of getting curious to make that move into the market. I mean, in the last month, I saw plenty of condos in newer buildings, mm -hmm. all priced in around 500000 that I have not, not seen, seen in a long time. In, in like probably in the last two years, even like, you know, when COVID happened, a lot of prices came down, but shortly after it went back up. What we see right now in the condo market, I think is a great opportunity that the people need to capitalize on. We're going to talk about it in the opportunity section at the end. I'm also seeing, speaking of opportunities in a quick little nugget, on MLS, the motivated like sellers and the larger unit types, there's a lot of them, whereas we didn't see that before. You know, so that's yeah. not the majority of the market. It is usually in the one plus dens. They yeah. do hold. And that's why we see the average price being, you know, in the 730. But I think the larger units, it's really the time and the opportunity to upsize because you can get it for a little bit, you know, more affordable right exactly. now. Exactly. Yeah. 
And uh, well, on that topic, there's a lot of deals out there too. I saw a condo on the east end over the weekend. And call us for the deals, guys. They would pay for your um, land transfer tax. Literally, yeah, a lot they of will pay incentives. for the land transfer tax. So I mean, mm -hmm. first of all, that condo tra traded back in April, comparable to that, one floor lower for $735,000 without parking. This condo, you would get it way below, I can't say how much because I know, <laughs> you would get it way below seven hundred, dollars and you would save on the land transfer tax. And you have a parking. How much more savings do you want, right? That's great. Exactly. That's really great. So York Region, the detached market is at $1,644,000. They inched up a little bit and um, at the peak, they were at around $1,993,000. If you remember a few months ago, we talked about the gap being about $450,000 from the peak. Now it's shrunk February, to $350,000, yeah. 349 to be exact. That's 21% drop in the prices. So as you can see, prices have leveled off. You know, I don't think it's going to go much lower than this, even if we have another interest rate hike. What do you think? I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think it's going to go much lower. Because there's not much supply, right? That's yeah. the whole thing. So condo market in York region, uh, we were at just over 800,000 back in March, which was the peak. February was around 796. Right now, we're sitting at $693,000. That's over $100,000. That's $103,000 drop from February. 13% drop in the prices. Again, good opportunities down there. Moving on to Mississauga. That's an interesting one because uh, the detached market there was sitting at around $1,921,000 million, $1 million, $1 million back in February. And I think in January, it was even higher than that. But right now, the average detached is sitting at $1,427,000, uh, which is wow. a huge drop. Not uh, great for the sellers, obviously, but... But again, you know, depends where you're going. If you're buying in the same market yes. and selling the same market, you're looking at the same saving. But if you're selling there, you're coming downtown Toronto, buying a detached, that's a totally different area. Condo market in Mississauga at the peak was around $736,000. Now we're at $649,000. $87,000 drop, 12% drop overall. And we're talking year to date. We're talking February okay. till now. So peak just till to now. Be, yeah, just yeah. to be clear. So Oakville, that's where the opportunities are. Last month, I was talking about mm -hmm. months of inventory, and Oakville was the one with the most uh, number of inventory, like months of inventory. Sitting worth, inventory. Yeah, too. sitting inventory. Yeah. We're three months of sitting inventory. And that's where you can actually get the deals. But right now, what we're going to talk about... Deals in Oakville. Deals in Oakville. <laughs> deals in Oakville. So the average price in Oakville for the detached back in February was sitting at $2,373,000. Right now, it's sitting at $1,800,000. To, to be exact, $1,801,000. Mm -hmm. And that's $572,000 difference from yeah. the peak. And that's 24% drop. So a lot of the detached homes... On the market right now, especially on the higher end of the spectrum, have dropped significantly. That whole price one over two and a half million is sitting, and that's where you can get deals. And we've seen some of the standing inventory that people were motivated to sell. If you're not motivated to sell, you're not gonna sell. And I think people, what they're gonna do right now is once they hear this information, it's gonna take them time to digest, and it's gonna be like, oh wait, we can actually get into Oakville now because a lot of people steer clear of this location. Yeah because they're a little bit scared of the price point, right? But it's a very desirable place That's to be. That's exactly the point. If you're looking, let's say in Mississauga, some of the areas, and you know, you want to upgrade, mm -hmm. Oakville is your next best shot right now that the prices have dropped. And that is the only pocket I would say there's a lot of opportunity there. Right. Condos uh, at the peak were around $818,000. Right now they're sitting at 719. So about 100K drop yeah. or 12%. Now on to the, I would say the hottest pocket right now, Durham region. So the standing inventory is that- Who would have thought? Who would have thought, <laughs> literally. Like when we look at the numbers, it actually explains why the standing inventory has dropped to below 2%, uh, 2 months. So we're at 1.82 months of inventory. All I'm noticing is the 11 days on the market for average sale right now. That's crazy. That is crazy. What was GTA standing at? 14 or so, no? No, it was, oh my God, it was 22 days oh on the market. God. So it's half of the average GTA. And That's the reason is thing, yeah. average price is sitting at $892,000. Going back to um, February, the average price 
was sitting at $1,229,000. That's 27% drop. So it's actually uh, for, the, uh, for all types of housing. Okay. For cool. detached, at the peak of the market, we're sitting at $1,372,000 in Durham region. Mm -hmm. Bunkers. Right now, we're below a million dollar at nine hundred eighty-two thousand. There's, I've seen deals in the eight hundred, even you lower did than a deal. that. Yeah. So yeah, you mind saying what that was because that was incredible. Yeah. So a do like these are the detached prices. These are the um, actual deals that people can find and still get qualified for mortgage. But with that being said, because the prices have dropped so much, I mean three hundred ninety thousand. Three hundred and ninety thousand dollars <laughs> drop. <laughs> Not used to saying those numbers. <laughs> Three hundred ninety thousand dollar drop in average detach, which is twenty eight percent. People are actually, you know, affording these homes now. So that's why there's less inventory and there's going to be upward pressure in the prices. I don't think we're going to go lower than this. Uh, maybe in December yeah. we're yeah. going to see lower prices because of lower Depends number of sales. That's how motivated also the sellers are, right? Yeah. But it's like that but again, thing the drives... activity is dropping because it's December. December to January, yeah. activity yeah, is going to yeah, drop. Exactly. But I don't foresee things going lower than that. I don't either. And that's what I was going to say. It's like that saying, you know, drive till you afford. And so if you can't get something in the city, Durham is your next bet. And I think that's what's going to level the prices back up And then where, where do we go next? Womanville. If you're buying in a good location, mm -hmm. you are seeing less of a drop. And sometimes you see crazy increases in prices. Each pocket is behaving differently. We've talked about it before. So what I want to talk about right now is the actual pockets that have gone up in value in the last month. Mount Pleasant? Yeah, Mount Pleasant. It had 12% price increase last month. I mean, like Mount Pleasant, Lisa, surprised. they've always been like, <laughs> they've always been yeah. susceptible to these drops. And right now we actually saw a huge price increase there. And we're talking about all types of housing, not just detached. The average price has actually gone up to 978000 That includes semi-detached condos, condos, everything. everything. Yeah. One 8.6% price increase to, uh, that's about 108000 price increase in one since last month. Again, guys, if you're not out there to buy deals, you know, you may miss the boat. And we never know when the bottom is till we've actually out of it. So I'm seeing some indication that, you know, within the next few months, we could literally see the bottom of the market yeah. and you know it'll be too and late lot, and a lot of pockets prices are actually rising high park 6.1 percent increase and the average price is sitting at 1.4 million dollars that there that area is crazy and midtown area is actually another pocket that had one of the highest increases 23.7 percent increase in Midtown, the West I mean, section. you're also still like really close to transit, so I think that'll always well, yeah, keep it got, really strong, right? You, you Especially got, with everything coming. If, if, yeah, and LRT also hopefully will be done, but the Midtown West section has had the highest price increase since October, 23%. But again, we have uh, really nice areas. I mean, like, you know, we got the Forest yeah. Hill, that whole West pocket oh, is yeah. uh, really nice. There are some nice condos, and we've seen a lot of higher end condos actually trading hand in that pocket. So talking about opportunities, we briefly touched about condo segment being one of the opportunities uh, people should invest in, mm -hmm. but we wanna see what has actually happened since the craziness at the peak of the market. So condos were lagging at yes. the beginning of the market by about a month, because February was the peak for detached, March was the peak for condos. condos yeah. So let's look at this uh, little microanalysis we've put together. This great microanalysis. The average price, as we can see, peaked in March at $891,000, right? And that's when we had about one month of inventory. We had sales of 528 units with listing active listing of 535 units. So, so literally almost everything that went to market sold. Yeah. From that point on, we had the interest rate hikes. And it's funny to look at months of supply uh, just increasing. So the months of inventory over there was at one month. In April, we go to 1.78. In May, we go to three months of inventory. We're in like balanced market territory almost. At June, we're at 3.13 months. July goes to 3.72 months of inventory. And that's where, you know, the, the opportunities were. Yeah. In. And in August, we went down to 2.45 months of inventory. September, we picked back up to 3.3. Last month in October, mm -hmm. Actually, the month before, in October, 
we're at almost four and a half months of inventory. We're almost in a proper buyer's market. Yeah. The whole condo segment is a great opportunity for people to get in. Keep in mind, this is CO1. CO1, uh, for those that don't know, no, it's is, like the downtown proper. Uh, yeah. We can see the map here. Not including the east side of things. From 891,500 average price point in March, we're down to $797,000. So this is where you should be looking at if you're mm -hmm. buying for investment and second. For yourself. For and yourself. Yeah, if you want to get in the market, this is the opportunity. And second, the rents have gone up drastically yeah. since March. So, so if you're an investor, that's a great day for you. And if you're obviously getting into the market, you're probably living somewhere renting where your rent is increasing. And so it's time to make that switch into home ownership, you know? I mean, to put things in perspective, you had a condo up for lease uh, within, I think, three days. We had 67 showings. Uh, like this is like what it was back in February for detached market. Mm -hmm. So it's important also to just see that if you have the need and you need to move or, you know, the, to identify that. So get information about what, you know, your pocket where you're looking at it is doing. How is it performing? Is it coming down? Is it coming up? Getting that pre-approval and knowing your affordability as well. And that can maybe point you in the right direction of where you're going to be going to. Right. Exactly. I mean, like never start looking without a pre-approval because that will not really get you anywhere. You don't know how much your payments are. And you don't know what you're looking at. Yeah. Uh, but identifying the need, I think, is just the point that I wanted to make. So but with that being said, who do you know that's buying or selling who would find these information useful? Please share it with them so they can yes. make informed decision whether they're buying or selling. And if you like this, don't forget to like and subscribe. And we have a lot of little short clips that will come <laughs> in our YouTube so you can get notified anytime they are getting uploaded. And we'll see you next time. Have a good one.